Once again, thank you for joining with us on our online Bible study. Um, this will be the last one um, through June. Uh, I'll be gone during the months of July. And um, we once again pray that we're able to uh, return to uh, study God's word in person here at Faith. But Pastor McConaughey will continue on with his study. So I wanted to leave with somebody um, very important because of the lessons that we can learn in the life of this individual. We're going back to the New Testament, um, Acts chapter 16, where we join Paul along with Silas and picking up Timothy along the way in this second missionary journey of Paul, where he meets an interesting person, a woman by the name of Lydia. I'd like to read to you then Acts chapter 16, verses 1 through 15. Paul came also to Derbe and to Lystra. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him. He took him, circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they went on their way through the cities, they delivered to them for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and the elders who were in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and they increased in numbers daily. Now comes the Macedonian call in verse six. And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come up to Mysia, they attempted to go in Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. The conversion of Lydia, verse 11. So setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis. From there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in the city some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we supposed there would be a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul and after this she was baptized, she and her household as well. She then urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come unto my house and stay. And she prevailed among us. So Lydia, a woman of Thyatira, we learn very little about her in these passages, only two verses, Acts chapter 16, verses 14 and 15. It is told with such simplicity, but such great beauty. Paul evidently felt just as happy in ministering to a few God-fearing women, women as he did to the entire synagogue. He goes to the place in Philippi, and he goes down to the river to find this group gathered together in a place of prayer. And we read in the scriptures that the Lord opened her heart. Much more dramatic accounts of conversions taking place, even Paul's conversion in a sound of thunder from the, the sky, Paul becoming blind and falling to the ground. But this is somebody whose heart has, had been prepared to hear the gospel. You know, we don't always get those grand conversions with great emotion. Sometimes we get people like Lydia 
coming to hear the word of God, trusting Jesus, and seeing these things. I pray you too have your hearts opened by the Lord, that we too can acknowledge that Lydia is a prime example of someone to whom we can emulate. We begin with the first point about her. Although Lydia was an obscure and humble woman, it was through her that God opened and passed into Europe the gospel of Jesus Christ. We hear these words. She was a successful businesswoman, Thyatira, a town known for its selling of purple cloth, a unique process which made it the cloth of royalty. You know what, if not for this, if not for her conversion, she would have passed through history unnamed or very, not very significant at all. But God chose this individual with a humble heart to open up the gate for the gospel to be spread not only in modern day Turkey, but flowing into Greece and through modern Europe. God oftentimes uses small, simple voices to carry his message forth. I can show, share with you two examples. William Carey was a great missionary who um, spread the word of God. The Lord opened his heart for the people of India and he made a dramatic impact in that area. And the famous Dr. Livings, David Livingston, Dr. Livingston, I presume, met by Stanley in Africa. But it was his open heart that opened this gate. And what a great harvest was yielded because of her. Number two, Lydia was a worshiper of God before the Lord Jesus Christ entered her heart. We read that she was literally at a prayer meeting she was sincere in religious observances, but she had not been saved yet through faith in Jesus Christ. Her heart had not yet been open to welcome the Savior. How many people do you think are like this? Sincere and honest and good people. There are, there are thousands. And dear Lord, you've given us this opportunity to bring the knowledge of the truth of the gospel into their lives, just as Paul and Silas and Timothy brought into the life of Lydia. There's one thing that makes a person a Christian in the presence of God. It's your heart, it's your faith, it's your life. Number three, Lydia listened to the gospel. Here was an opportunity for her at the riverside being involved in her activities on the Sabbath not in the synagogue, but outside of the synagogue, outside of the church walls. And oftentimes, some of the greatest opportunities we have to share the gospel is outside the church building. Lydia listened to the gospel, and it was the Lord who saved her. This is literally an illustration of Romans chapter 10, verse 17 in action. Lydia, hearing the gospel, and faith becoming operative in her heart. This is how the sovereign God works in the salvation of a soul, and Lydia gave her full attention to Paul's presentation of the gospel. He was declaring the truth of God, and she heard about the person and the work of Christ, and her mind was open as well as her heart. And it's found that directly following this conversion, faith produced action. Lydia lost no time in confessing her Lord. Oftentimes, that's the way it works. One person receiving this wonderful and great news shares it with others. We find in the scripture it says that she was baptized along with all the members of her household. Your faith makes an impact not only on yourself, but true faith impacts the lives of other people that are around you. Listen to the scriptural order that took place. She was baptized, and this faith, as she believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, she was able through God's gift to receive him as Savior and Lord, and to be able to confess this 
Here is God's wonderful ordained gift for confessing openly that we believe in Christ. What a joy that must have been to have this seed of faith nurture and be grown and to see the confidence that Paul gave to her and her household as they were baptized in the river, barely close to the spot where she first heard the gospel. Baptisms are a strong testimony to other people. Every time we have a baptism here at Faith, we light the Christ candle. The Christ candle is a wonderful reminder that the light of Christ is shining into the heart of someone who has received this gift from God, the gift of faith. And to nourish that, and to have that grow, and to have it impact other people is one of the prime examples of Lydia for us. Lydia was not the only one to be baptized. Her whole household was baptized, which means, of course, that this seed of faith was planted in their very hearts. And they understood Jesus, the message of Christ, the one who God sent in to be the salvation of the world. You know, in the book of Acts and in other parts in Scripture, we see and glimpse the love of God in this action. For it is God's plan that all are saved, that he gives this opportunity to all people, even those on the fringe, an individual like Timothy having a Jewish mother and a Greek father. But especially we're reminded through Lydia that here is someone that feared God but had the opportunity through the gospel to have even more. We read in Psalm 68, verse 6, that God sets the lonely in families. We have an opportunity to make sure that within the family, no one is ever alone. Lydia impacted others within her family, and she became part of a larger family, the family of faith, the family of God. That's the desire. That truly is when you boil it down to why we do the things that we do. It is desire as those grafted into, adopted into the family of God. We of Gentile background never forget that those that have that gift, being the apple of God's eye, the, those of the Jewish faith, there is a wonderful opportunity for us to witness that the gospel, too, is for God's children. We're all part of that family. And being part of that family brings about a responsibility that no one should be alone. And finally, we see an important lesson. Lydia's faith showed itself in good deeds. Not that her good deeds saved her, but the very part of her faith prevailed upon because she wanted to learn more. She wanted more of these lessons to be given to her family. No one is saved in this way. No one is saved by their good works. We know that from scripture, it's clear. We are saved because of our faith. But James reminds us that faith without works is dead. And where there is true faith, where faith is alone, it's never alone. It always has within its nature the desire to serve others and to share that faith with a hurting world. Lydia's open home, I believe, is a true example of an open heart. And it works the same way here at Faith. Our hearts are open, so our church is open. We want people to hear the message of Jesus. For there was an important lesson in this, in the final one. Lydia's one desire was to be faithful to her Lord. This is clearly stated in verse 15. She longed to be true to the one who had done so much for her. I would ask you, is this our consuming desire, to be faithful to Jesus no matter what the cost? Lydia opened a door. But it wasn't Lydia herself. She came with an open heart, and that open heart 
was received by Christ. And through that open heart, other hearts were open, other doors were open to where the gospel had that opportunity through people like you and I taking the courageous act of going out into a community to share what Jesus has done. Let's close with a prayer as we're reminded how blessed we are with Lydia. Dear Lord, Lydia had such great qualities. And we could say in an earthly way, her business sense, her household, and the way that she ran it, and the relationships that she established are those that prepared the way for the gospel. Her heart was open, O oh Lord, to hear your message, and your message changed her life. Help us also, dear Lord, to take those things in which we are successful and to use them in a powerful way in regards to our faith. For Lord, you have called us to be faithful with all things. May Lydia be a shining example of someone who opened their heart, not only to you, but she opened her heart to others. Dear Lord, may this be us, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.